Hello chemists and welcome to Bales Chemistry. In this episode we're looking at Maxwell Boltzmann curves and this is AQA specification 1.5 kinetics and appears on paper two of your final exams. If you're new to the channel please subscribe for more A-level chemistry content each week and if you're already subscribed and finding these videos useful please share them with your friends and teachers. A quick recap then of what we've already talked about in the last episode. Reactions happen because molecules of reactants collide. Collisions must happen with the correct amount of energy for two molecules to react and to form a new product molecule. We call this energy activation energy. If you want to see more about that, click the link at the top of the screen and if you're watching on the phone, there's a link in the description below. In a sample of gas, all the molecules have different amounts of energy. We can think of them arranged on a scale like this. There are different numbers of molecules with each amount of energy in the sample. With a few molecules having the lowest energy and a few the highest amounts of energy with most of the molecules in the middle. Now instead of drawing out the molecules individually, they can be represented on a curve. This is called a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve, named after two scientists, James Maxwell and Ludwig Boltzmann. As we previously mentioned, the activation energy is required for a successful chemical reaction to take place when two molecules of reactant collide. We can show this on the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve. The activation energy is marked on the curve and the area to the right of the activation energy line shows the molecules that will react when they collide. As you can see, this is a relatively small amount of molecules. If we add a catalyst, this lowers the activation energy and is shown here as an EA cat line. This increases the number of molecules that will now react when they collide. Drawing Maxwell-Boltzmann curves is a very common exam question, especially on AS level papers. There are four things that you must remember as these often form the marking points for this type of question. First, you must remember to label the axes. It's becoming more common to ask you just to add the labels to the axes in a question. Second, always start your curves at zero or the origin. Third, make sure your peak is clearly defined in the curve. And finally, make sure your curve flattens out near the x-axis. This is called an asymptote. It's important to show the potential for molecules with more energy. If we lower the temperature of the molecules, this alters the shape of the curve. The curve becomes higher, but its position is shifted to the left. The peak also becomes narrower, and the new curve must only cross the old curve once. If we increase the temperature of the molecules, this also alters the shape of the curve. The curve becomes lower in height, and its position is shifted to the right. The peak of the curve becomes wider or broader. And like before, the new curve should only cross the old curve once. However, the position it crosses is now different. So in summary, Maxwell-Boltzmann curves show the number of molecules and their energy in an ideal gas. The energy is placed on the x-axis and the number of molecules is placed on the y-axis. The curve should not rejoin the x-axis after leaving the origin. Lower temperatures shift the peak to the left, making it higher and narrower. Higher temperatures shift the peak to the right, making it lower and broader. And adding a catalyst moves the activation energy to the left, meaning more molecules now have the energy for the reaction. Thanks for watching, chemists. If you need more help on the kinetics topic, click on the playlist here. And to make sure you get all our weekly content, click here to subscribe.